There are many different ways inside Photoshop to mask out or remove the background and isolate a object or a person from that image. The process I'm about to show you isn't the most perfect way of doing this by any means, but it is a very fast way to isolate objects or people from their images. My name is Javier Mercedes and I like making tutorials about Adobe things on the internet. So if you're into that, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you wanna follow along, I'm going to link the photo that I'm using in the description below. And it's from pexels.com, which is a great online resource for royalty-free photos, just like this one that you see in front of you. The tool that I think most people are familiar with in Photoshop to mask out an image is the lasso tool. So if you were to hit L or go over here to your menu and click this, this is the lasso tool. And what you are basically doing is freehanding this outline of the lady right here. And I don't like this because you have to have like doctor steady hands. There are two other versions of the lasso tool that you may also be familiar with. The polygon lasso tool, which is kind of similar to the lasso tool, except you don't need to have such steady hands. What you would do is you would make an initial click, move your mouse and only click in spots where you want this to go. I think the polygon lasso tool is a great tool as well for certain circumstances. And as you can see, it kind of did what it needed to here. But I think a great version of the lasso tool is the magnetic lasso tool. You would click and the computer will automatically find the edge that it thinks that you're trying to trace, which it's doing an amazing job. But as you can see, it's not perfect. And another reason why I don't like the magnetic lasso tool for speed is because I have to sit here and trace around the whole object that I want to. Other than a couple little slip ups here, it did a fantastic job of outlining it. But there is a tool that I think is even faster than the magnetic lasso tool. It's the quick selection tool. So if you were to hit W, then that will bring this up. And after somebody showed me the quick selection tool, I never really went back. And here's why. You can click in the center and look as the computer finds the edge as you go. Just like that, I almost selected everything that I needed to. But you see this little section right here, you can say, oh, hey, that didn't do a good job right there. So all I have to do is hold Option or Alt on Windows and get rid of that little spot and voila, right there, I just selected everything that I needed to within the image. Now, what we need to do is actually pull her away from the background so we could put any background that we wanted to back there. So I'm going to go up here to select and mask. And now you can see that we have a little bit going on right here in the hair. And I picked this image specifically because it has a little bit of hair and other things like that. And there are some amazing Photoshop tutorials out there for removing the background and leaving the hair. But this is a very quick and dirty version of getting rid of a background. And I want to show you what I would do in order to alleviate some of these edges here on the hair. So to begin with, we have our selection tool and you can hit the open bracket or close bracket to make it bigger or smaller. And I'm mainly concerned with this area right here for right now. So I'm going to hold option and I'm actually just gonna get rid of just this section right here. So as you can see, Photoshop is doing an amazing job at finding the area that I want. Another thing that may help here is if I were to turn up edge detection. So in edge detection, I'm gonna click the smart radius box with the radius all the way up on the slider. You can see that it's actually fine tuning these hair follicles right here because I wanna keep this nice and quick. See all of these hard edges, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take up my smooth and just smooth everything out all the way. And now we don't have as bad of these lines. Maybe right here, and I might bring some of that back. And maybe I'm gonna shift my edge in just a little bit so it can clamp down on the image. I might feather just a little bit. Now I just wanna look at it in a different light just to see. Yeah, I would say that looks pretty good. So the next step is how to output this selection and what I've done in the past and this is the way that I always do things now is to do new layer with layer mask and the reason why is because it's going to create a new layer and if you ever need to bring anything back or brush a little bit more away you're going to be able to do that without being destructive to the image and I'll show you what I mean right here new layer with layer mask hit okay and look at that that's not that bad 
Let me bring in a random background and put it underneath the photo like this. And as you can see, Photoshop did an amazing job on the hair right here. But I want to show you what I mean by if you needed to brush out or brush back in any of this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the brush right here, or you could hit B. And you want to select this layer mask and not the layer itself, because if you were to do that, then you'd be painting on the image. You don't want to do that. You want to paint on this black and white mask right here. The colors that you will want for your brush are either black or white. You can flip flop between them with X. So if I hit X, it's going to switch to black. And if I hit X again, it's going to switch back to white. If I were to paint right now, you would get that image that was originally behind her to come back in. So then you could do something cool like that. But that's not what I want to do. Let's say I wanted to actually remove just this top part right here. So I'm going to use my bracket right here to make my brush smaller. Or you could go over here and adjust the size right here. I'm going to switch my brush over to black. And now I can brush out those pieces of hair to just kind of make this a fluid mask right here and kind of fade it off. Let's see how that looks. It looks like I took away too much, so I'm going to hit X and you can start to bring some of that back if you wanted to. Look at that. So there you go. As I explained before, there are many ways to isolate an object or a person from the background in an image. If you haven't tried the quick selection tool in your workflow, maybe give it a go and that could be something added to your toolkit as an editor. I hope this tutorial was super helpful for you. And if it was, go ahead and share it out with a friend. If not, no hard feelings. I still love you guys. Till next episode, my name's Javier Mercedes and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye guys.